Friday, December 13th, 2019, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So this morning, yes, there's a lot of distractions out there, but uh, I will focus on how the Fed will provide up to half a trillion dollars, yes, half a trillion with a T of funds to the repo market, to Wall Street uh, in the next month through the year end, through the beginning of the year in order to keep that uh, system going, hopefully for them. I think that's the really big news right now. Of course, I'm going to talk quickly today about Friday the 13th, right? Why it's so significant, why it's unlucky for some, right? Uh, also the UK election, another distraction in my opinion, something that's actually taken Brexit a little bit out of the limelight, I would say. Let's start with the U UK election uh, results. Prior to the election yesterday, uh, there were talks that we'd have a hung parliament, but it seems like uh, those are just talks. In reality, Boris Johnson has won a big uh, victory. Uh, right now, he's got uh, 363 seats here uh, in the FT uh, story. Uh, they, he needed 321 for a majority, right? Don't forget, previous government was a minority government. So this is uh, good news for, um, how can I say, <laughs> decreasing uncertainty for the UK. So jo Johnson's Tories win UK general election, right? Uh, the pound rallied massively yesterday after 10 p.m. London. That's when the first uh, exit polls came out. It went from like, 131 to 135, it was up almost 3%. Uh, and I'll just show you a chart of the uh, uh, Sterling GBP USD going back to around 2004. Uh, you can see here that during the 08 crisis, the pound collapsed basically from 211 uh, a year earlier to a low of 130, uh, roughly around 135. Uh, and that was in uh, January of 2009. So uh, overnight, the high has been just above 135. So you can see how important that uh, level is. We also uh, reached that level, uh, let's see here, back in August of 2016, right? Just after the referendum results. And we went back up to that 135 level. So that's the key level. Uh, does it change anything? Uh, <laughs> Boris Johnson winning. Is it gonna decrease the debt this country has? Uh, is it gonna improve uh, the finances, the economy? Maybe a little bit of sentiment, but the underlying fundamentals uh, don't change in my opinion, and that's what people need to focus on. Uh, and I always look at this uh, website here. Uh, it shows you US debt clock, but this is for the world, right? Look at the UK, uh, national debt. 3.6 trillion dollars GDP roughly the same 3.6 trillion dollars uh, public debt to GDP almost a hundred percent external debt to GDP hundred and eighty two percent I don't want any of you uh, saying that I'm I'm uh, <laughs> speculating that Donald Trump is a Knights Templar because he isn't in my opinion uh, it's just that I heard recently an interview uh, Bill Holter with uh, Greg Hunter on USA Watchdog. They were talking about the impeachment proceedings and uh, they both said this has never been seen before. All these made up charges, right? Uh, it's never happened before in history. Well, I think they're wrong because it happened to the Templars. And uh, that's what 1307, uh, October 13th, uh, Friday, October the 13th, 1307 was all about. That's when the King of France uh, came up with these trumped up charges of heresy against uh, the Knights Templars. Uh, so he could just like round them up and uh, burn them at the stake, right? Get rid of them. And why did he do that? Well, uh, there's uh, several uh, reasons. One of them, I would say the biggest one is they they become very powerful. Uh, and the other reason is uh, King Philip of the Fair of France owed them a lot of money. So that's usually the way. Uh, uh, there is a good uh, series on Netflix called Nightfall, and it's about the Templars. 
But one thing I would say, it's not all true, right? So uh, don't take that as uh, the exact history of what happened. Uh, I recommend this book here, The Templars by Dan Jones. I've read this, uh, I think it was last year, very good book. So let's quickly have a look here what they say about the Knights Templar and what uh, happened uh, 712 years ago. It was in October, of course, we are in December. Uh, the Knights Templar were the wealthiest, most powerful, and most secretive of the military orders that flourished in the Crusading era. Their story encompassing the greatest international conflict of the Middle Ages, a network of global finance, and the swift rise followed by a bloody and humiliating fall has left a comet's tale of mystery that continues to fascinate and inspire historians, novelists, and conspiracy theorists. Um, so this is what it says. Dan Jones charts every stage in the Templars' 100-year history, their foundation in the early 12th century as a charitable order, protecting pilgrims visiting the Holy Lands, their growth into a warrior elite who fought as shock troops in crusader battles, their evolution into sophisticated financiers enjoying sweeping tax breaks, freedom from regulation, and privileged access to popes, emperors, and kings, and their suppression and final disbandment in 1312 by King Philip the Fair of France and Pope Clement uh, V. So yeah, they were rounded up in 1307, and uh, the final dis disbandment was 1312. It took a few years to try them with these trumped-up charges, in my opinion. Uh, they accused them of uh, uh, doing all kinds of uh, nasty things like kissing each other in their initiation rituals, killing babies, <laughs> uh, idolizing false gods, right? They, uh, but uh, don't forget, King Philip owed them a lot of money and they were getting too powerful. So that's what happened to them. Uh, I thought about this, you know, all the trumped up charges. It's the same thing that's happening to Trump. Am I defending Trump overall? No, I don't think he's doing the right thing personally, uh, talking up, up the stock market all the time, tweeting at times uh, like yesterday when the markets were weak, right, to, uh, about trade. But I would say the impeachment uh, charges and proceedings reminds me very much of what King Philip did to the uh, to the Templars. So yeah, it's not the first time in history that uh, uh, a president or an institution has been accused of false up Trump charges in a massive way, right? So that's what I wanted to put out there. So before I look at the markets this morning uh, and the repo situation, just wanted to say that I've got a 20% discount in the Teespring store, Maneco 64 Teespring store, uh, up until the end of the year, promo code is you know, Christmas XMAS 2019. You get 20% off. Uh, this morning I'm drinking off my uh, Become Your Own Central Bank Keep Stacking Gold Sovereign mug. And in the back it's got Don't Get Caught Holding the Bag. It's got a Silver Britannia. Uh, I've got one with a Buffalo American coin with the same uh, comment and it's got also an Aussie uh, co uh, kangaroo uh, coin at the back, silver kangaroo. So the repo market, yeah, uh, behind all the uh, distractions, right, impeachment proceedings, uh, UK general election, this story came out yesterday. Uh, while well, Zero Hedge covered because uh, the New York Fed, they they still publishing their website uh, publicly and uh, they change things. Uh, this is regarding their statement. Uh, it says statement regarding repurchase operations, right? So this is what uh, Zero Hedge has reported. Massive, huge, largest ever, Fed will flood markets with gargantuan 500 billion in liquidity to avoid year-end repo crisis. One thing I would say that I would change in that headline is that the Fed will provide up to 500 billion if needed, right? 
So because the market might not need it. There's a lot of speculation that the, the New York Fed is not doing the right thing uh, to solve the repo problem. There was a report from Credit Suisse and one of their analysts, a uh, Hungarian-born analyst, who worked at the Fed and helped the Fed solve the repo crisis in 08. He thinks that uh, things could get very, very uh, unsettled, unsettled towards the end of the year uh, and that it could uh, eventually result in a financial debacle, right? A stock market crash. So this is very uh, important, in my opinion. Uh, and why do I always focus on the markets, not so much in politics? Well, because that's what I do anyway in this uh, channel. I want to help people protect themselves monetarily, financially, uh, with my opinion and the fact that I worked in the markets for over 20 years, right? Uh, and why does that mean I don't think uh, people being right spiritually in their lives and other aspects is not important? No, not at all. All the commercial transactions we do in our lives uh, with people exchanging things involves money and that's really important. And that's why I focus on this. So uh, I'll put the link below uh, to this article in the description. You can go through it. Uh, according to uh, to them here, uh, the Fed's balance sheet could get up to almost four and a half trillion by uh, the middle of January. Uh, we were uh, below four trillion uh, end of August, beginning of September, right? So this is what they say at the end. The question then is whether this will be sufficient to refute the repo doomsday predicted by Pozar. That's the Hungarian uh, born. Uh, chap, right? One which was supposed to launch QE4. Or will the Fed's gargantuan liquidity injection still not be enough and lead to a collapse in the repo market? We will find out in the next three weeks. So that's how important this is. So now let's look at the markets this morning. 7.55 a.m. London time. So uh, spot gold is at 14 69.50 down slightly range has been 1461.70 to 14.70 of course yesterday i think we got up to 14.87 uh we had really weak jobless claim numbers i think they jumped they were expected around 212,000 uh jobless claims for the the previous week they came out at 252 so the markets weren't doing very well and then we got the tweet from trump about the trade uh, deal right that it was almost done virtually done and don't forget this is not the whole trade deal this is just phase one so don't get fooled about that either uh, so yeah everything turned around stock market rallied massively gold and silver got hit uh, yes it's annoying but we need to keep an eye, the, our eyes on the ball and in the longer term picture uh, that these central bankers uh, in the U US, in the UK, in the EU, ECB, uh, they'll need to keep printing like there's no tomorrow because the debt's not going to stop growing, right? Uh, silver, 1691 right now, unchanged. Range has been 1683 to 1697. Silver, of course, got up to around 1713 yesterday. The Dow up another 125. Uh, here we go. Uh, the Dow future, 28,244. So it continues. Uh, S&P 3180 up uh, just under half a percent. Uh, NASDAQ 100 future up half a percent. So yeah, uh, the stock market is continuing to go up. Uh, and despite that, isn't it a crazy world? The Feds uh, could add up to half a trillion uh, into the repo market could uh, add about 400 billion to their balance sheet. The reason it isn't 500 trillion is because you you get some repos uh, maturing uh, at different times, right? So it's not exactly uh, the 500 trillion. Uh, the pounds has come off the highs of 135.17, but it's still up 2%. Euro 111.65, up a third. So the dollar is quite weak here. I know the, the pound is weighing on the dollar uh, a, a bit because the pound 
is part of the dollar index, even though it's not a huge part. Uh, the dollar's up, though, against the yen, <laughs> a third of a percent. So it's kind of balancing it out here. It's at 109.62. So against the Chinese yuan, the dollar dropped quite a bit yesterday through 7 yuan. Uh, overnight, it got uh, down to 6.92, and now it's up half a percent, though, at 6.98, just below 7. Crude oil uh, continues to uh, strengthen. Uh, WTI is up half a percent, almost at $60, 59.40. Brent is at 64.20. The other point I like to make is that uh, copper, high-grade copper, is uh, looking interesting. And why am I covering that? Well, because high-grade copper is uh, important. It can be an indicator of uh, an economy that's doing well, well or it could be an indication of inflation. So you look at this weekly chart here, going back to 2015, uh, this is how uh, high-grade copper has done in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we still need to wait and see if this is gonna continue, if this is not just another false move. And to finish off, the bond markets, uh, they got hit hard yesterday. The 10-year 10, 10 yield uh, rose uh, up to, uh, 195 overnight we were around 180 yesterday morning so that's not good either for for the system uh bond yields moving like this uh and um the fact that uh i don't really think the economy underlying economy is doing that well in the u.s nor anywhere else we saw jobless claims yesterday uh balloon to to high very high levels so uh, it, this is troubling. <laughs> you see, the Fed's trying to do too many things, trying to have its cake and eat it, uh, and they can't control everything, right? So we need to keep an eye on the 10-year yield. Right now, it's at 190. It was as high as 195 overnight. So that's a big move up in yields. That means bond prices dropped. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please hit the like button. Uh, make sure you share it far and wide as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Even if you have subscribed, I've heard uh, from people that they've been unsubscribed uh, from my channel. So you just need to make sure that uh, uh, YouTube has not unsubscribed you from my channel and subscribe again, right? You can also follow me on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.